The Swift Programming Language, 5.6 Beta Edition, copyright 2022 by Apple, licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. An enumeration defines a common type for a group of related values and enables you to work with those values in a type-safe way within your code. If you are familiar with C, you will know that C enumerations assign related names to a set of integer values. Enumerations in Swift are much more flexible and don't have to provide a value for each case of the enumeration. If a value, known as a raw value, is provided for each enumeration case, the value can be a string, a character, or a value of any integer or floating point type. Alternatively, enumeration cases can specify associated values of any type to be stored along with each different case value, much as unions or variants do in other languages. You can define a common set of related cases as part of one enumeration, each of which has a different set of values of appropriate types associated with it. Enumerations in Swift are first-class types in their own right. They adopt many features traditionally supported only by classes, such as computed properties to provide additional information about the enumeration's current value, and instance methods to provide functionality related to the values the enumeration represents. Enumerations can also define initializers to provide an initial case value, can be extended to expand their functionality beyond their original implementation, and can conform to protocols to provide standard functionality. For more about these capabilities, see properties, methods, initialization, extensions, and protocols. Enumeration syntax. You introduce enumerations with the enum keyword and place their entire definition within a pair of braces. Here is an example for the four main points of a compass. The values defined in an enumeration, such as north, south, east, and west, are its enumeration cases. You use the case keyword to introduce new enumeration cases. Note, Swift enumeration cases do not have an integer value set by default, unlike languages like C and Objective-C. In the compass point example above, north, south, east, and west do not implicitly equal 0, 1, 2, and 3. Instead, the different enumeration cases are values in their own right with an explicitly defined type of compass point. Multiple cases can appear on a single line separated by commas. Each enumeration definition defines a new type. Like other types in Swift, their names, such as compass point and planet, start with a capital letter. Give enumeration types singular rather than plural names so that they read as self-evident. The type of direction to head is inferred when it is initialized with one of the possible values of compass point. Once direction to head is declared as a compass point, you can set it to a different compass point value using a shorter dot syntax. The type of direction to head is already known, and so you can drop the type when setting its value. This makes for highly readable code when working with explicitly typed enumeration values. Matching enumeration values with a switch statement. You can match individual enumeration values with a switch statement. You can read this code as, consider the value of direction ahead. In the case where it equals dot north, print, lots of planets have a north. In the case where it equals dot south, print, watch out for penguins, and so on. As described in control flow, a switch statement must be exhaustive when considering an enumeration's cases. If the case for dot west is omitted, this code does not compile because it does not consider the complete list of compass point cases. Requiring exhaustiveness ensures that enumeration cases are not accidentally omitted. When it is not appropriate to provide a case for every enumeration case, you can provide a default case to cover any cases that are not addressed explicitly. Iterating over enumeration cases. For some enumerations, it is useful to have a collection of all of that enumeration's cases. You enable this by writing case iterable after the enumeration's name. Swift exposes a collection of all the cases as an all cases property of the enumeration type. Here is an example. In the example above, you write beverage.allcases to access a collection that contains all of the cases of the beverage enumeration. 
you can use the all cases like any other collection. The collection's elements are instances of the enumeration type, so in this case they are beverage values. The example above counts how many cases there are, and the example below uses a for in loop to iterate over all the cases. The syntax used in the examples above marks the enumeration as conforming to the case iterable protocol. For information about protocols, see protocols. Associated values. The examples in the previous section show how the cases of an enumeration are a defined and typed value in their own right. You can set a constant or variable to planet.earth and check for this value later. However, it is sometimes useful to be able to store values of other types alongside these case values. This additional information is called an associated value, and it varies each time you use that case as a value in your code. You can define Swift enumerations to store associated values of any given type, and the value types can be different for each case of the enumeration if needed. Enumerations similar to these are known as discriminated unions, tagged unions, or variants in other programming languages. For example, suppose an inventory tracking system needs to track products by two different types of barcode. Some products are labeled with ID barcodes in UPC format, which uses the numbers 0 to 9. Each barcode has number system digit, followed by five manufacturer code digits, and five product code digits. These are followed by a check digit to verify that the code has been scanned correctly. Other products are labeled with 2D barcodes in QR code format, which can use any ISO 8859-1 character and can encode a string up to 2,953 characters long. It is convenient for an inventory tracking system to store UPC barcodes as a tuple of four integers and QR code barcodes as a string of any length. In Swift, an enumeration to define product barcodes of either type might look like this. This can be read as define an enumeration type called barcode, which can take either a value of UPC with an associated value of type tuple int 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 int, or a value of QR code with an associated value of type string. This definition does not provide any actual int or string values. It just defines the type of associated values that barcode constants and variables can store when they're equal to barcode.upc or barcode.qr code. You can then create new barcodes using either type. This example creates a new variable called product barcode and assigns it a val value of barcode.upc8, 85909, 51226, 3. You can then assign the same product a different type of barcode. At this point, the original barcode.upc and its integer values are replaced by the new barcode.qr code and its string value. Constants and variables of type barcode can store either a .upc or a .qr code together with their associated values, but they can store only one of them at any given time. You can check the different barcode types using a switch statement similar to the example in matching enumeration values with a switch statement. This time, however, the associated values are extracted as part of the switch statement. You extract each associated value as a constant with the let prefix or a variable with the var prefix for use within the switch case's body. If all of the associated values for an enumeration case are extracted as constants, or if all are extracted as variables, you can place a single var or let annotation before the case name for brevity. Raw values. The barcode example in associated values shows how cases of an enumeration can declare that they store associated values of different types. As an alternative to associated values, enumeration cases can come pre-populated with default values called raw values, which are all of the same type. Here is an example that stores raw ASCII values alongside named enumeration cases. Here, the raw values for an enumeration called ASCII control character are defined to be of type character and are set to some of the more common ASCII control characters. Character values are described in strings and characters. Raw values can be strings, characters, or any of the integer or floating point number types. Each raw value must be unique within its enumeration declaration. Note, raw values are not the same as associated values. 
Raw values are set to pre-populated values when you first define the enumeration in your code, like the three ASCII codes above. The raw value for a particular enumeration case is always the same. Associated values are set when you create a new constant or variable based on one of the enumerations cases and can be different each time you do so. Implicitly assigned raw values. When you're working with the enumerations that store integer or string raw values, you don't have to explicitly assign a raw value for each case. When you don't, Swift automatically assigns the values for you. For example, when integers are used for raw values, the implicit value for each case is one more than the previous case. If the first case does not have a value set, its value is zero. The enumeration below is a refinement of the earlier planet enumeration, with integer raw values to represent each planet's order from the sun. In the example above, planet.mercury has an implicit raw value of 1, planet.venus has an implicit raw value of 2, and so on. When strings are used for raw values, the implicit value for each case is the text of that case's name. The enumeration below is a refinement of the earlier compass point enumeration, with string raw values to represent each direction's name. In the example, compass point dot south has an implicit raw value of south, and so on. You access the raw value of an enumeration case with its raw value property. Initializing from a raw value. If you define an enumeration with the raw value type, the enumeration automatically receives an initializer that takes the value of the raw values type as a parameter called raw value and returns either an enumeration case or nil. You can use this initializer to try to create a new instance of the enumeration. This example identifies Uranus from its raw value of 7. Not all possible int values will find a matching planet, however. Because of this, the raw value initializer always returns an optional enumeration case. In the example above, possible planet is of type planet question mark or optional planet. Note, the raw value initializer is a failable initializer because not every raw value will return an enumeration case. For more information, see failable initializers. If you try to find a planet with a position of 11, the optional planet value returned by the raw value initializer will be nil. This example uses optional binding to try to access a planet with a raw value of 11. The statement, if let some planet equals planet raw value 11, creates an optional planet and sets some planet to the value of that optional planet if it can be retrieved. In this case, it is not possible to retrieve a planet with a position of 11, and so the else branch is executed instead. Recursive enumerations. A recursive enumeration is an enumeration that has another instance of the enumeration as the associated value for one or more of the enumeration cases. You indicate that an enumeration case is a recursive by writing indirect before it, which tells the compiler to insert the necessary layer of indirection. For example, here is an enumeration that stores simple arithmetic expressions. You can also write indirect before the beginning of the enumeration to enable indirection for all of the enumeration's cases that have an associated value. This enumeration can store three kinds of arithmetic expressions, a plain number, the addition of two expressions, and the multiplication of two expressions. The addition and multiplication cases have associated values that are also arithmetic expressions. These associated values make it possible to nest expressions. For example, the expression 5 plus 4 in parentheses times 2 has a number on the right-hand side of the multiplication and another expression on the left-hand side of the multiplication. Because the data is nested, the enumeration used to store the data also needs to support nesting. This means the enumeration needs to be recursive. The code below shows the arithmetic expression recursive enumeration being created for 5 plus 4 times 2. A recursive function is a straightforward way to work with data that has a recursive structure. For example, here is a function that evaluates an arithmetic expression. This function evaluates a plain number by simply returning the associated value. It evaluates an addition or multiplication by evaluating the expression on the left-hand side, evaluating the expression on the right-hand side, 
and then adding them or multiplying them. 